everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to another sewing vlog. So before I actually get into any sewing this week, which I have not done, it is Wednesday and this vlog is supposed to start on Sunday and in that time I haven't sewn at all. But on Sunday I did have a super super fun day where I went out on the peninsula with my friend Emily who you've seen on here before who's the sucky seamstress and we went antiquing which felt so nice to do, I haven't done that in forever, and just kind of exploring, driving along country roads and it was so much fun. But I figured I should show you my antique haul because I kind of got some stuff which I'm actually really excited about. So at the first store that we went to, which is I think called the Antique Mall, uh, both of these stores are in Port Orchard and I love Port Orchard, Washington for antiques. It's just got a cute little downtown with like three or four little antique stores in it. So super fun and the Antique Mall in particular is just fantastic. And they were having sales in almost every booth, so it was very hard to resist. So the first thing that I picked out was this gorgeous hat. Look at the weaving on that straw. Isn't that so pretty? I'm not great with dating hats, particularly, you know, little shaped ones like this, but I think it's pretty old. Um, certainly no newer than the 50s, but I think it might be a lot older than that, just based on the look of the straw. It's got a little veil that is a little bit torn, but uh, overall it's still in really nice condition. And I'm very excited to incorporate that into my historical costuming wardrobe. The other thing from that antique store is this gorgeous comb. Look at the sparkle on that. It's got little stones set into it. I'm pretty sure that it's just plastic, but it's very, very pretty. And it's been in this booth, I think literally for five years. And of course it was one of the booths that wasn't on sale, but I think it was, I think they'd slightly lowered the price since before. So, oh, the hat by the way was about $10, I believe, or just under like $9.60. And the comb, I think, they gave me 10% off, so I think it came out to about like $15.30 or something like that, plus tax. But it's so pretty. I'm very excited to use it. Then we went to another antique store across the street whose name I don't know. Um, and either they are having a going out of business sale, because that's what it said on the outside of the antique store, or they're having a reopening sale, because that's what it said on the inside of the antique store. So I'm really not sure but I bought two things there. One of them is actually not an antique, but I have been needing a new hat box for ages. All the stores like Ross, where, where I would normally get a hat box, have been closed. They had this giant hat box, which is fantastic, and I'm so excited to use it, and it was $9 for this hat box. So this will hold a whole bevy of hats. It's nice and big. So yeah, I'm excited for that. And the other thing that I bought at that same antique store was this gorgeous umbrella. So take a look at this handle. It's metal, pretty heavy, but really, really nice. But the handle isn't even the coolest thing about the umbrella. The coolest thing about this umbrella is when you open it. It makes this beautiful pattern inside. That lovely flower shape. I think that's so pretty. It does have a loose piece right here, which at first we had, when we opened it, we had pushed this up to open it, which meant that it wouldn't close. So I think it's been, become disconnected from this, and I'm not sure how to fix that, but I might try. But otherwise, it's fine just dangling around down on the handle also. And it's just so pretty. And I haven't tested it yet, but it should be a functional umbrella, as opposed to a parasol. It's also nice and long. Let me snap it up. I don't know the age of this, but I would guess 60s? 1960s? I'm honestly not sure. It could predate that, I guess, but um, that was my thought. And, well, I guess it's out of frame, but it is very long. Pretty sure it's at least almost, yeah, it's a uh, 34 and a half inches. So that's pretty exciting because I, 
as I've said before, I'm tall, I'm 5'10", and normally if I like have an umbrella or whatever, if I want to like just rest it like a walking stick, I have to be down here all crunched down. So it's nice when I can find a nice tall one. In fact, Emily found a parasol to recover in that first antique store that is so tall. It's probably like 38 inches or something like that wooden handle. So it's that's that was an exciting find. She got a lot of cool stuff. She got some fashion plates too. Anyway, there is one more thing that I want to show you antique wise, and it was actually the entire reason for our trip over there because on Facebook Marketplace, I found a gorgeous antique chair. I've been looking for one that could serve kind of as a filming sitting item slash backdrop, but also something that can just be a nice chair for my room. And so I found this gorgeous antique chair on Facebook Marketplace, and it was in Bremerton, which is an hour plus away from me. But Bremerton's right next to Port Orchard where those antique stores are. So that's why Emily joined me and we decided to just make a day of it. And oh my gosh, it was such a good day. This is that pretty chair. Look how nice this is. It's got a couple of tiny spots, but otherwise is in quite lovely condition. And I'm really liking it. It doesn't even creak and it's very comfortable. Look at that lovely tapestry. Totally my aesthetic. I am back at it with my teens dress because it is too hot to rhinestone and will be too hot to rhinestone until I think Friday or something like that. So I'm gonna keep chugging along on my teens dress. Today I'm working on the sleeves. I am going to go with just the pattern as is, I think, at least to start with, um, except that I am doing an in-between length. So this pattern, it's the same for cut A and for cut B, but cut A, it has a line that's shorter. I think that's a little too short for what I want. So I'm lengthening it by just over an inch and a half, and I'm going to cut my sleeve. I think I'm just going to cut one sleeve and see if that works. And then I will cut the other since it's no big pattern alteration. That's like, it's going to be easy to cut the second just directly from the pattern. It's a two piece sleeve and I better get to work. Well, that's a sleeve fail right here. Uh, the sleeve will go up to there, which is clearly not my armpit and um, it's pretty tight through the bicep, though oddly enough the hem fits perfectly. Also, it's too short, I think. It definitely doesn't reach a shoulder seam, and if this is in the right place. So yeah, that was just an overall total absolute fail. I think what's going on here is that the sleeve head is too high and not wide enough. So it's not giving me any of the width of the sleeve. It's just giving me the overall measurement because according to my measurements, the distance around the sleeve opening is what it should be for my arm's eye. But clearly this is nowhere remotely near working. So, so much for that. Good thing I've got a lot of this fabric because that was just a big old fail. Well, I've gotten a little bit closer with the mock-up this time. I recut the underarm portion of the sleeve and the length is now where I want it, but there's still, the underarm might actually be okay, but the over, overarm, over upper sleeve um, is still having issues because if you notice, what the heck is going on here? This isn't how a sleeve is shaped. The arms eye goes like this. So why is the sleeve cut away like this? And no, I uh, somehow don't have this attached backwards. I think this is just a really crappy pattern. So what I've decided is I am going to dismiss that pattern entirely. And I'm just gonna go back to my tried and true pattern that I use for all my Victorians, which is just like a two piece sleeve. And I've made like all of the markings from all of my past sleeves about like, oh, I need to go out three eighths inches or three quarters inches in some cases. And I am just going to do this sleeve because I know that this typically has about one inch of ease, which is really what I want for like a fitted sleeve. And I'm just going to do this and use the length from the inner sleeve, which is 13 inches, and just use that and make that my sleeve and hopefully, because that's my second mock-up, <laughs> this is another day, I'm sure you can tell, but it's my second mock-up and so I just want to get this done. 
Someone please tell me why I didn't just use this sleeve pattern earlier. I have used this sleeve pattern probably dozens of times and it always seems to work well. So why didn't I do it in the first place? Because look at this. It looks like a basically perfect sleeve. So just, you know, for future me's sake, if I'm ever watching this video in the future, I need to use the sleeve pattern. I need to not mess around with any other stupid sleeve patterns. I need to just use this sleeve pattern. So future Rebecca, please listen to yourself because this should work fine. I mean, obviously this is just the initial mock of the sleeve. I think I am going to go ahead and set this into this arm's eye before recutting the other sleeve to see if it'll do the same thing, just because I do want this to actually work. At the very least, I need to take this apart use it as the pattern and also surge it, surge the edges first. So, you know, we're a long ways from, from there, but hey, it's a sleeve that fits. It's the length I want. It's actually, if anything, it looks a little shifty down here. And I think this is again, a fabric issue, but it's almost like this bottom length has shifted a half an inch here in the center. So I do have to do a little bit of tweaking, but it's pretty much the exact sleeve that I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and set it into the bodice. All right, I have set my sleeve. Now, don't judge the state of this bodice slash dress because I'm not wearing a corset and so it doesn't fit at all. But I set my sleeve and I'm liking what I'm getting down here in the armpit. However, I think starting right about here, my shoulder seam is still just way too wide. So it's hitting like at least a half inch out further than I think I want it to. So I'm going to try and take it out just the top and see if I can change my ease a little bit. I'm hoping that I have enough room left in the sleeve because I did ease in the sleeve head here. So I'm hoping that if I take out a half inch of the shoulder seam that I will be able to fit the sleeve to that point in the uh, in the shoulder and not have to recut any of the sleeve because the rest of the sleeve is still looking really fantastic other than that weird bit where it was dipping here. I'm going to cut that out. But uh, but the sleeve length, sleeve width, everything, how it's fitting, the room under the arm, everything is fitting great there. So it's really just the fact that it is too far off my shoulder. I'm going to get a little closer here and you can see it's just sitting off my shoulder. So it needs to come up to probably about there where my finger is for it to be correct. So I'm going to again just undo that part and see if I can do it without undoing the whole thing. All right, it is almost correct now. You can see that I have some sort of a weird thing where it's not a straight line going on right here. So I'm just gonna fix that line. Um, that's not a big deal at all, but the rest of it is feeling much better. It definitely feels like it's where it's supposed to be on my shoulder and it looks, I think, where it's supposed to be. And uh, the fit and the movement of my sleeve is great. So this is the winner. Should have started with that pattern to begin with, duh. But I'm going to go ahead and take this out now. My roommate's cat is playing with my serger foot pedal cord. Everyone wants a cat cameo, right? This is Spoons, my roommate's cat. She's liking the lights. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and take the sleeves out now and cut the other sleeve and serge them and finish them and all that sort of thing and put them back in. That way I can start working on the collar. I have to do the collar before I can do any of the finishing binding of the front opening. Um, and the cool thing about the collar is if you have seen the video that I did on that Victorian bodice, Edwardian bodice, turn of the century anyway, that I bought that had really, really weird, ugly lace on it as a peplum and as a collar. I actually saved that lace after I took it off and I cleaned it with that retro clean lace cleaner stuff. And it is now pretty, very pretty, lovely vintage lace. I unfortunately don't have enough for both the cuffs and the collar. I'm just gonna have enough for the collar, but of course my hair's in the way. How lovely is that gonna be as the collar? So obviously it's gotta get cut to length and everything, but I'm really excited to be repurposing this vintage lace as my collar. So once I finish the sleeves, that will be the next step is moving on and doing a collar mock-up. We'll see how far off the pattern piece is for that. Just wanted to pop in here with a quick little update on what I've done on the dress today so far. Today is Friday and it is the evening at this point. I've been watching co-COVID videos all day. And while doing that, I did get the sleeves, you can see in the background here, I did get the sleeves attached onto the dress. 
I have also been working at mocking up the collar shape. So as I mentioned before, I'm using that antique lace for my collar and I have enough in the one piece that I can get exactly as you're seeing currently on the form. Um, that said, I didn't want to do just the lace because I thought that would be weird. I want to actually put the lace on a collar. So I am using the pattern that came with the Butterick pattern for the collar shape. But what I've done here is I have lengthened it because that collar is about two inches longer than what this pattern would equal. So in fact, I lengthened it 2.25 inches, uh, including the seam allowance, to get the length that you can see in the background there. And don't worry, I'll show you closer up later. Uh, so now what I'm doing is I realized after mocking all this up that, and I did just mock it up with paper and with lace. I didn't actually mock it up with fabric, so I hope it works. I realized that I don't have any interfacing right now somehow. Apparently I'm completely out of it and or I just cannot find it. It's supposed to go in one specific cubby. All of my cubbies are kind of organized for what type of fabrics they are and it is not in that cubby. It's all either just sew-in interfacing or, which I, is fine I guess, or it is um, embroidery stabilizer. So what I did actually find in there though was a little bit remnant of hair canvas, uh, probably from my 1890s skirts. And so I've decided to use the hair canvas instead of the interfacing just because I like it better than the sew-in interfacing. That stuff feels so plasticky. And if I'm not going to cheat and use fusible, might as well use the hair canvas. So I have cut out my shape in the hair canvas. I didn't have enough to do all one piece. So there is a seam right there in the center back, which should be just fine. And then right now what you're seeing here is two layers of the linen cotton, whatever it is the dress fabric on top of the hair canvas. I'm going to sew along this outside seam and then turn one layer over the hair canvas and at that point I can treat it as one. I'm just going to be binding the neckline on the inside. I'm not doing a facing for this, I've decided. So once I have this all turned, I'm going to surge, probably because I just surge everything, surge to, uh, <laughs> to kind of seal it up as one and then I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the collar and bind that whole opening. And I don't know that I will get there today. It's still too hot to do Elsa rhinestones, but I'm hoping that tomorrow I can hopefully spend the whole day on rhinestones. So I would like to get as far as possible on this today. Um, because I don't have enough of the antique lace for the cuffs, and also I realized it would be a little long, honestly, of a lace for the cuffs, I have another vintage lace that is a slightly more taupey color. So I'm using that same retro clean lace cleaner that I used on the collar lace, and I'm hoping that it will get it to be a matched color. So I'll find that out probably tomorrow because it has to soak for 24 to 48 hours. So hopefully tomorrow, maybe the next day is when I will find out about the cuffs. If that doesn't work, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for the cuffs. I might not do anything or I might do a narrow lace trim that I have that will match. But uh, that is the current plan is to use. It's about a two inch wide, I think, vintage lace trim for the cuffs. So I'm going to keep trucking along on the collar. I don't know if I'm going to do another check in tonight because it's also OK. I'm vain, but I hate coming to you guys when I'm like super hot and sweaty and I'm already very hot and sweaty right now, but I'm about to go walk lion and I know I'm just going to get hotter and sweatier. So that's part of the reason why I don't always do end of the night check-ins because by then I've wilted completely. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm vain. Don't judge me. I'm the type of person who puts on makeup to walk my dog. <laughs> um, Anyway, so that's why I might not come back to you with more updates tonight. I'm, and I've been focusing so much on co-COVID that I haven't been doing any other filming. So you're just going to get these updates and not like filming of me doing anything because I'm watching videos all day. So anyway, I'll come back to you later with more, but it might be tomorrow. So I got my collar all set on yesterday. The lace is sewn into the top of the collar but it is pinned in at the bottom. I'm going to go around and hand sew probably the bottom edge of the lace. And in some cases, there's like some pleats going on kind of around the back. So I'm going to hand sew those little pleats down. And that was just done so that it could curve like I needed it to, since this is a curved collar and it's just a straight piece of lace. But anyway, as you can see, everything is fitting 
fantastically. Like I'm super, super happy with all of this right now. So uh, I also finished soaking that other lace, which is tangled around this hanger. And I think it's gonna work well. It's still just maybe a, t a hint more ecru than the collar, but it is close enough. And since my sleeve is down here and my collar's up there, I think by the time it gets through that seven inch or so gap, no one's really going to be able to tell that it is a different color. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do a cuff and put the lace on the cuff. I think I'm gonna kind of finish everything else on this and then decide on that. But this is the lace that I'm using. So it's another beautiful vintage lace, just like the collar, just a different pattern. Um, so anyway, I am going to mark my hem, I think, while I have this on, and then I am going to bind off the neckline and the front closure, and I'll probably go ahead and just put my hooks and eyes on this front cross closure and the skirt closure as well, just so that it's done and it's easy to put on. I mean, really, like, I'm almost done with this project. I've got the hem, I've got the binding of the neckline, I've got the closures of the neckline slash skirt, and I have the sleeve cuffs and that's it. So I'm very close to finishing it. That said, we finally reached a slightly cooler day. I think the high today is 80. And so I might spend more of today rhinestoning instead. So we'll see what wins out um, or I'll rhinestone until I just start sweating profusely and then go back to doing hand sewing and fun things on here because really almost everything at this point is is hand sewing, which is nice because I can just park myself in front of all those co-COVID videos and hand sew to my heart's content. So, yay. Hello, I just wanted to hop in here with a quick update. It has been a few days at least since uh, the last portion <laughs> that I filmed here. And mostly that is because I've been working on Elsa a lot. The weather has cooled down a bit, so I've really been trying to take advantage of that and work on Elsa as opposed to my teen stress. However, towards the end of co-COVID over the weekend, I did work on the teen stress. All of the closures are done, which was a lot of hooks nice. I think there's 17 just on the overlap, not including the part that closes down the center. And I also completely finished the collar, so that is done. So next, I haven't done the hem yet, so I need to put it on, mark and do the hem, and then I do need to do the sleeve cuffs as well. I think the only other thing that needs doing on the teen's dress is that I need to do that sort of like fabric part that fills in the neckline. So all that aside, I will come back in that when I go to try it on uh, to mark the hem, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all so much. There are so many new people here watching this channel, and I'm so excited about that. I think there are 500 of you that just joined in the last like week or so because of co-covid I would assume and that is amazing welcome thank you so much for being here it really just filled my heart with so much joy and love to see you all here and see you just you know coming and hanging out on my channel that's so so exciting I also you may have noticed if you've seen my most recent video or any videos in the past few days here that I've gotten monetized. So that was really, really, really exciting. I've been working towards that milestone for quite some time. So you will be seeing ads here. I am trying to go through my older videos and make sure that the ads are not being obtrusive. So if you find that they are at all, please let me know. That way I can go and fix whatever YouTube has automatically put on my videos. To go along with that, I've also decided to start a Kofi, coffee, however you pronounce it. And so there's a link to that in the description. Don't feel obligated, but if you wanna help support my <laughs> sewing hobby and my videos on this channel, uh, please go ahead and uh, send me over a coffee on coffee. <laughs> All right, I have the dress on as you can see, and I am unfortunately realizing that there's just no way really that I'm going to finish it for this week's vlog. So I do apologize. I really wanted to, but then I wound up spending most of the week on Elsa, so what can you do? Mostly I'm realizing that because 
when I put it on, I noticed that there were more things or remembered that there were more things that I had to do than I thought that I had to do. So I already knew that I had to do the collar filler area. So I decided to use some of the leftover lace from the collar. This was the piece that was around the neckline on that bodice. And I'm going to use this to put on top of some of the turquoise fabric for the collar or the neckline filler area. That's really just going to be a little piece of fabric that I'm either going to snap in or I am going to sew in slash use hooks and eyes. And I haven't decided that yet. I have to look at a few more fashion plates because I'm planning to make a gimp for this outfit. And a gimp is basically a usually long sleeve blouse-ish, um, under blouse that went underneath bodices in the 19 aughts through early 19 teens. And it would have fancy-ish sleeves and a fancy-ish neckline area and collar, uh, usually high collared. And then it would be a very plain, normally cotton or polished cotton that would make up the body because you wouldn't actually see the body underneath whatever you're wearing it under. It was also tightly fitted to the body and it was usually cropped. Sometimes it would even not reach the natural waistline, particularly for teens. And other times it would just go to the natural waist and then just stop right there. I'm actually thinking that I have two gimps in my collection. So I'm thinking that the next examining an antique uh, video that you're going to get from me will be examining both of my gimps together. So anyway, I am going to make that neckline filler, but if I'm wearing it with a gimp, I don't know that I want the neckline filler. So I don't know if I'm going to make it so that it can't leave the bodice and I just wear the gimp underneath that as well, or if I make it so that it is just a piece that I could snap in or I could snap off and leave it home if I'm going to wear the gimp with the bodice. So I have to do a little bit more Pinterest researching and figure that out. But uh, I also decided that for the cuffs, I'm not going to do cuffs. I should say for the sleeve ends, I am not going to do cuffs. I'm just going to finish this with bias tape turned under and then I'm going to put the lace on top of the sleeve like a decoration as opposed to like a cuff decoration. One of the other things that I noticed that I need to fix is that I didn't make this section where these pins are, I didn't make this section tight enough slash in line. I think I cut it on a slight curve. Now, as I've mentioned, this is very slinky fabric and I don't want it on the curve. So I'm just pulling it a little bit tighter. I've got to move over, I think, three or four of my bars so that it will be this new line. So I'm gonna to have to draw out the new line. I also remembered that I am wanting to make a belt to go on top of this and I'd completely forgotten that. So I'm gonna make a belt out of the turquoise fabric. I think it's gonna have a bow on it. The one in the pattern has a little bow on it and I like that. So <laughs> I think I'm going to carry that over from the pattern and I just don't have time to make that belt by the time I finish this week's vlog video. And then I am in the process of pinning the hem. I've pinned up the front of the skirt and I think it's about where I want it, but I have to put on my shoes, double check, and then finish the whole rest of the hem and sew that into place. Today is a nice cool day though. So like the idea of me just hand sewing kind of the whole day and wasting the time that I could be spending on Elsa rhinestones, it just, Whereas tomorrow is going to be a very hot day. It's supposed to go up like 15 degrees. So I feel like it just makes more sense to work on Elsa Rhinestones today when it's below 70 even or about 70 rather than tomorrow when it's supposed to be 85. And then the one other thing that I was thinking of adding because it's on my extant inspiration is to have fake buttons down the front. Now I did buy several cover button type kits, but I don't know yet whether I want to cover them with the turquoise fabric or with like a creamy fabric that would match the lace. I just haven't decided that yet. And it's also entirely possible I'm gonna go through my button collection and see if I have, I would need probably like at least a lot of buttons um, to do this instead because part of that is also, I don't know if I want the buttons to go all the way down to the hem or if I want the buttons to just go maybe like mid thigh. I have a skirt of this era, 1912-ish, that I made oh, back in 2012, I think, and it is 
a blue linen skirt and it has buttons and I did not I think do the buttons all the way down I just did them partly so and I do like that look so again I think I've got to go through Pinterest see what would be a little bit more make sense and do my buttons there and decide it also if they're going to be turquoise or cream so as you can tell there's a lot left to go on this and today is Saturday and I end these vlogs on Saturday night. So there's just no way that I'm going to get everything done, unfortunately, on this. So I guess the big reveal will be in next week's vlog. The other thing that I would really love to hear from you guys about is would you like to see a how I made this teen stress video? Now, obviously, you're getting all of the nitty gritty details in these vlogs. So probably for most of you watching this vlog, maybe you don't need that video. But if you have seen my past videos from past projects, I do tend to do a wrap up how I made this garment or this outfit video. And it's just a short, succinct video that really goes over, okay, I used these patterns, I made these changes to the patterns, I used these fabrics, this is what encompasses this in 10 to 15 minutes or less. So please do let me know in the comments if that is something that you would like to see. I do intend to do a getting dressed in the 19 teens video for you because I know you all really like those types of videos. And I've already had some questions actually on this corset. So I do want to show you what the corset looks like, what the layers look like, how all of that goes. Luckily for this project, the only new part of this is the dress and the belt will be as well. I didn't have to make anything else because I already have done several 19 teens outfits and I already had that all in my costume wardrobe. So I did luck out with all that, but I will at least show you how all of the layers go together. So do look out for that in an upcoming video. That will probably not be until mid to end of September though. So anyway, I'm going to get to work on the hem and the belt and the moving the hooks and eyes and the neckline piece and the sleeves and everything. And we'll see how much of that I will get done today. I will pop back in by the end of the day just to close out this vlog and show you if I managed to accomplish anything else today. I cut a sort of triangular piece that is eight inches long by 7.5 inches wide out of both the turquoise fabric and a layer of cotton sateen. This turned out to be just a bit big. I could have made it about seven by 6.5 and it would have been fine. I sewed these right sides together, leaving a gap in the sides to turn them right sides out, clipped my corners, turned it, and pressed it. Then I found my center and centered the lace design over the fabric, pinning it into place and cutting off the excess lace. I tried on the dress with the neckline piece pinned in place, marked where the neckline would come to, and sewed down the lace by machine. First, just outside of the visible neckline area, and then again around the edges, after turning the lace over the edge so that it would be stitched down in place both on the front side and the back side at once. The top of the lace is sewn in place by hand. Finally, I marked snap placements on both the neckline insert and the neckline of the bodice and sewed the snaps into place. So as you can see, I actually managed to get way more done on this dress than I thought I was going to be, probably because I didn't work on Elsa at all. But I really wanted to share with you this dress in this vlog. It is not 100% complete, but it is so, so close. And the only reason that it's not complete is because I found out that some of the things that I needed to complete the dress, I don't have in my stash. For example, I ran out of snaps while I was snapping in this neckline. I did decide to make it completely removable for wearing with a gimp. So uh, I have six snaps in here currently connecting this side of the neckline, and this side is pinned in and needs five more snaps, which I'll pick up the next time I'm at the store. I also went to go look at the belt and realized I don't have any interfacing, so I need interfacing for the belt. I also don't even think I have any of the hair canvas left that I used for the collar, so I definitely need some sort of stiffening for the belt, and I just don't have any. So I'm going to go out and get those missing items this week so that I can finish this dress for the next vlog, and I'll give you a nice big reveal in the next vlog, but I did want to share with you everything that I did on this one. So I did finish the sleeve ends here with the nice vintage lace. And I also opted, so I added my buttons here down, all, they go all the way down the skirt to about four inches above the hem. 
and I opted not to do the covered buttons. I looked through my stash of fabrics for fabric that would match the lace closely and the only fabric that I had that was remotely close to the lace was actually a tiny little like scrap cabbage section of a just off white silk that I believe is from my child's Victorian dress and I didn't feel like the silk really went with this. I also only had 15 of the covered buttons that I wanted to use and I wound up using 19 buttons all the way down the side. So I'm glad that I didn't opt for that. These buttons are just a plastic button. I think they're slightly vintage, but not very, probably from the 80s or 90s. And they are uh, just a sort of off-white plastic with a little bit of like a cut fake cut metal in a um, antique silver. So I thought that they went nicely and actually they add just a little bit of sparkle to the, an otherwise fairly plain dress. So I'm happy with the choice for these buttons. And also it was a lot easier to sew on 19 buttons that were already made rather than having to make my own 19 buttons. This dress now has, I believe, 19 buttons and like 24 hooks and eyes so and, but again these are fake buttons it's still just a lot of little fiddlies but uh, all this needs is the belt and having those snaps in and otherwise this dress is complete i plan to do a photo shoot this coming week once i finish those two things and so you can plan to see some nice pictures popped up into the next vlog. So do be sure to check back for those. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this vlog. Again, it's so nice to have all of you here and so many new people here. I'm just flabbergasted at the response. It's really, really fantastic. If you did like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this for me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on my YouTube twice a week, but I post Post every day over to Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support me in all of my sewing endeavors, you can also drop me a little thank you in my Kofi, which is linked down below in the description. Thank you once again all so much, and I will see you in my next video. Happy sewing!